Hi, this is Dr. Doug. My temperature today is 98 degrees. If you look in the description box, I have a video that I just put out that explains why it's very important for all of us to know our average body temperature uh, because it might not be what you think it is. Uh, this is a daily vlog that I'm doing. I'm broadcasting this here from New York City. I live in Brooklyn. That's where I am today in my apartment. But uh, I practice in Manhattan. Today we're going to talk a little bit about a new COVID-19 symptom that just uh, was identified, which is loss of sense of smell and taste, and uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. First, I wanted to start with some stats. The uh, world stats for cases is 373,000, which went up again, as you already know, but that's the number, uh, 16,319 uh, deaths. So if we go to the next uh, slide, you'll see um, see the comparison. So just since yesterday, we went up by 51,000 cases worldwide, 2,573 new deaths in one day. Um, so this is still going fast. I like this uh, chart. I've been referring to it in the previous videos. And you can look back through other videos and see what these numbers have been. But... Just to give you an idea, a week ago, the United States was the sixth most, um, the country with the sixth most cases. Now we're up at, seven days later, we're up at third. It could be that we're testing more, but it also could be that we're getting sick more. So you look for yourself, see what you think. Um, let's start with yesterday. Yesterday's the one on the bottom. The U.S. had 33,000 total cases, and it's up. 8,486 cases, bringing us to 42,032 cases as of today. And today, again, is March 23rd. So total deaths is 508 compared to 419 yesterday. That's an 89 deaths um, increase since yesterday. And um, one of the things I like to look at is um, per million. So we have 101 um cases per million of our total U.S. population yesterday, but today it's up at 127. So we're seeing this increase that's uh, hitting more and more higher percentage of the United States population. Look at Italy, the one above us, 978 uh, compared to 1,057 today. But look at what China's done. China's keeping that flat line. So that's what we call flatten the curve. And hockey stick is what they call Italy in the United States. And what's interesting is that we're about two weeks behind Italy's hockey stick. And when I say hockey stick, I mean that it's like this, and then the numbers ramp up. So uh, here in New York City, uh, one in four New York City hospital coronavirus patients, coronavirus patients is under age 50. So this is not just old people getting infected. Now, old people are, of course, um, there. that's the concern for deaths, but it does not mean two things. One, that younger people aren't suffering from it, uh, but even worse than that is younger people may be the ones spreading it more than anyone else because the older people, for the most part, are staying put in their apartments. Younger people are feeling good and still moving around and possibly spreading it because they also very often are asymptomatic or relatively speaking less symptomatic. So um, something uh, I found interesting, uh, kind of a uh, you know poetic justice, Harvey Weinstein uh, test positive. Uh, he's serving 23 year sentence for rape and sexual assault. I know that makes me a bad person to just say that, but I said it, what can I say? Um, New York State. New York State reaches, oh, this is a picture of Wall Street uh, taken earlier today, and this is usually a hustling and bustling intersection at Wall Street, uh, the actual street called Wall Street and Nassau Street. This corner is where the uh, New York Stock Exchange is, and um, we've now as a state reached 20,000 positive cases and 5,000 new ones overnight. Wow. New York testing. So, and this is one of the increase in the numbers I understand is that we're testing more. This is a good thing, but it's also going to, as Trump says, ruin the numbers. But we need to know, um, 
we need to know these numbers. So now we're testing 16,000 people a day. I wish we were testing or had the capacity to test 100,000 or even a million people in one day and let's just get it done with and see where we stand. It would ruin the numbers, but at least we'd know where we stand. But I guess we're, we're ramping up at the pace that we can handle or not handle, but the pace that we are doing is the pace we're doing. Um, positive cases here in New York City is 12,339, and that number just keeps going up and up and up. And um, so here's uh, something that Mayor Bill de Blasio said. He said nearly one person an hour is dying from coronavirus in the city. That's really sad. That's upsetting. Coronavirus deaths in New York City soared to 99 last night. Uh, that's a 57% increase from the last time it was tallied. And the um, positive cases in New York City represent a third of the total cases in the United States and roughly 5% of the global cases. So New York City is a hotspot. Uh, we're virtually a petri dish here on this island with, you know, I don't know the number, 11 million, 8 to 15 million people. Uh, well, that's when they're not evacuating, but crazy numbers, right? So let's go to the next one. And I, I told you in the beginning of the video that we're going to talk about a new symptom. Uh, here's a quote. We have also identified a new symptom, loss of sense of smell and taste uh, called anosmia. That may mean that people without other symptoms, what loss of the sense of if they have lost their sense of taste or smell, they might not have any other symptom. And these are people that might have to concern themselves whether they're positive for the coronavirus. And if so, maybe go get tested. So they're not showing a fever. They're not showing a cough. They're not showing shortness of breath. They're not showing aches and pains. They just have loss of sense of taste and smell. And one of my um, favorite clients, I was uh, patients I was talking to today on the phone, and she said that her teenage daughter has been disinterested in food for the last three days. And when questioned why, she said, why should I eat? I, I, I don't even taste it. So then uh, Jenny, the mother, took a piece of garlic and uh, kind of mushed it up a little bit and had her close her eyes and put it under her nose and said, do you smell this? And she said, no. So it's not just sense of taste, but sense of smell as well. So look for that as a possible... Uh, clue. Uh, anosmia in particular has been seen in patients ultimately testing positive the coronavirus with no other symptoms. And um, this may warrant serious consideration for self-isolation and testing of these individuals. Um, evidence from other countries that... So, so th we know that the entry point is the eyes, the nose, and the throat area. And my guess is that the loss of sense of taste and smell will be while you're suffering from the virus, especially uh, if it's a young person, I would imagine that that would come back. So um, thank you for uh, thank you for subscribing, uh, or if you haven't subscribed, maybe you will. And um, let's see. Oh, you lost me there. And um, thanks for uh, watching. I'll be putting out another one tomorrow.